Hello, everybody. I am so excited to be here right now with my friend David Savage, Empath NYC. Very, very cool that, that he's in LA and able to sit on the couch today at Sway TV and talk about something that I am so passionate about, healing. He's also talking out of his book, Healing Heals the Healer too. As you guys know, I do a show about chakras and chakras are basically like the energy centers of your body that like you kind of can experience traumas in or they can get closed off. And it really affects the way you function every day. So I wanted to talk to David about how he feels that traumas can, can affect these things in our lives. What do you think, David? I'm happy to be here. <laughs> I'm learning about Amazon live video streaming. I think it, I'm excited because I've, I've written this book and I love the idea that I can talk about it with people who can immediately and very easily purchase it. Isn't so that's, that cool? yes, so that's exciting for me. And um, I'm happy to be here with you, Chakra Girl. <laughs> and uh, happy to uh, go wherever you lead. All right, very, very cool. So we're gonna just we're just gonna start off and, and talk about our carousel right now because that is one of the things that we do here. And if you guys look at our carousel, you can find David's book, which I'm gonna bring right here. And David, I want to know like a little bit about like the story behind the book. When did you write it? What inspired this? Well, I'm torn between speaking this way and this way. What do you think? Do I, I look at you or do I look? I think you can look at the camera I think I look and at just the camera. pretend like you're seeing my face there in the monitor. And okay. Just, yeah. Sounds like a good plan. Yes. So this book, um, as you can see, it's, I'll show you, it's these little essays. So each essay is a page or two. And originally it started out as Facebook posts. So over the course of seven years, I was writing increasingly personal and sometimes really awkwardly personal stories about my own journey, healing, what it means in my case to be an empath. And I didn't realize that I was writing it for more than, you know, maybe the few hundred people who followed me on Facebook. But several of those people reached out and said, these are really good. You should do something with them. And, uh, and then I just woke up one morning and I just collected them all and sent them to an editor friend of mine. And I said, is there a book here? And she said, yes, there is. And so slowly but surely, me and my friend Faye pieced together this collection of essays, which I've called Healing Heals the Healer Too. That's beautiful. And do you feel like through your healing journey, because I know from, from knowing you as a person and listening to you online, David has quite a following on Clubhouse and all the other social platforms where he does classes and courses. Do you feel like you've been, you know, working on your healing? Are you healed? What are, what are your thoughts? I have been working on my healing. And he healing, healing is a tricky word. Um, let's look at it in the physical sense first, because that's how we often use the word. So if you break your arm, then it will take time to heal. And then once it's healed, there'll always be some little wound left. Yes, I feel and that. <laughs> I feel them all over. How do we get rid of those? You, you don't. Okay, those so are, continue. Those I'm are sorry. Marks of transformation. <laughs> and you, you can, there, in a sense, there is no being done healing because things are always getting hurt. And so then you are always healing. But the way I use the term and the way I think people are often using the term healing is to refer to the healing of deep psychological traumas that most of us, maybe all of us, have been subject to in our lives. And I do think it is possible in one lifetime to heal from your deepest psychological traumas, though very few of us will get there. And I don't know whether I'll get there or not. I would say that I am far along on that path, but certainly not all the way. And I still definitely run into dark, painful places in my psyche that still need love, care, and attention to heal. Very interesting. Um, I'm just gonna open up questions to our chat. We have Charles Humphrey here. What's up, Charles? And anyone else who wants to, to give a question for David about their own healing or their own traumas. We are so open today and we're gonna be taking calls later, all right? So, and then one lucky caller is gonna get a free book. So I'm super excited about that because I read your book, David, and it was just, I just, I, I loved all the, the stories and I feel like 
when you can read somebody else's pain or just journeys through healing, it can also, you, you relate to them and you feel like, oh my God, like he has that, I have that. Is yeah, that what I think you that's were... I think that's right. And I think writing about really deep and vulnerable stuff on Facebook um, and then sharing it in this book was a way to invite people to see themselves in what I was writing. And um, I got a lot of, I'm still getting a lot of, and I welcome feedback like, wow, I can't believe you said this thing that I was also feeling. That's a really satisfying um, response I get to my book a lot. Mm -hmm. And now the title of the book, mm -hmm. Healing Heals the Healer Too. How do you feel that that helps? Well, for those of us, I don't know, do you identify as a healer in some way, Lauren? I do, definitely do. You do? Yeah. Well, I'll ask you, when you are in your flow and you are helping somebody else, do you not feel like some part of you is also being helped? Yes, I do. Why is that? Tell me about that feeling. It's just a feeling of, I don't know, it's just like you feel like you're doing something positive or you're taking, you're taking your mind off your own traumas and you're putting them into someone else and then you can kind of like step out of your box and like look at everything. I think that's, that's, that's true. And I, I would say, I guess I would add to that, that if you have a natural inclination toward working with people in healing ways, then the process of giving your gifts in itself is healing. Uh -huh. Much like I know you were, you're a dancer, Lauren. When you are dancing, is that not healing? Oh yeah, for sure. And so for when, sure. and I know you're, you're a passionate actor. When you are on a set, playing a role you're genuinely excited about. Do you not feel that something in you is healing? Yeah, oh yeah, for sure, for sure. So the same thing for healers where you are, you know, let's say you're a Reiki master, which I am not, but you are doing your Reiki work on somebody, that healing energy is flowing through you into them and that flow through you into them is opening you and healing you. Now there is a, there's a asterisk there, which is, um, you can also burn out or run out of steam or, um, so it's not, it's not healing always heals the healer, but healing really can heal the healer. That's amazing, that's amazing. And I'm excited, everyone, I really think you guys should check out his book, it's in the carousel. And I'm just, I'm excited to, to learn more about healing and traumas, but let's just reset this uh, room for a second. Mm. And yeah, I'm just, I'm using uh, clubhouse terminology, but whatever. Uh, we have David Savage here, and he's talking about his amazing book, Healing Heals the Healer 2, and he's talking about healing and traumas and feelings. He does an amazing class once a week, so if you go to him on Instagram, Empath NYC, you can find him there and go to his link tree and just check, check him out. But right now, I want to also talk about something that's in the queue, because I feel, I really do feel like when you're doing other things that are really working on yourself or working on wellness that actually also helps the healing. And I'm a huge fan of crystals. So what do you think about crystals? I think they can be enormously powerful for people and, uh, and especially if you're called to one, like what feels like your crystal. Uh huh. Yeah. So this is rose quartz. So I highly recommend it for anyone who's either healing. When my dog got sick, I got him a bunch and I would just like put it near him, like <laughs> put them near him. And I really, I really did feel like it, it really does help energetically. Uh, something else we have on here is the awesome arrow garden. So which planting, I feel like getting connected with the earth and just growing something else, I feel like really does help me in terms of like my garden. Do you have an arrow garden, Lauren? Yes, I, of course I have an arrow oh. garden and I have lots of spices and basil and tomatoes in it. And it's just really cool to keep it in the kitchen because then you can mm. like take pieces off and put it in your food. And it's kind of, it's kind of like an easy way to, to start just growing your spices. So that's something that I really, really love. But what do you think? Are there anything that you do in your daily life? Do you have like a daily routine that like helps you if you're feeling down or shut down or sad? Like, what do you do? Um, well, you asked two questions in one. I'm sorry, I talk that's very fast. Totally fine. <laughs> I, I, you talk fast and I talk slow. All right, so I'm gonna go a little so slower. You can, you can go at your pace, and I'll just try to translate <laughs> your pace into into my pace. Okay. What do you and guys think maybe, in the comments? Maybe, do I talk too fast? Let us know. 
Well, I'm <laughs> I'm not saying you talk too fast. I'm saying we are going to have to find a nice middle ground. We're going to find a middle ground between our two ways. And, okay. And I'm actually happy to translate your fast way of speaking into my slow way of processing. Okay. So it's not it's not on you to shift. It's on me to understand your approach and adjust accordingly. Okay. And you asked two questions. The first question you asked was, do I have a morning routine? And the second question you asked was, are there things I do if I freak out or shut down or am overwhelmed? Yes. And I think those are two great questions, but I would like to separate them if you like. So, okay. so your first question is, do I, David, have a morning routine? And I do have a morning routine. Every morning I wake up and I sit for 25 minutes. It is my meditation practice. Um, I have not missed a day in years. It is sacrosanct. And then I do something a little bit strange, uh, but I'll ha I'm happy to share. I lay on the ground and I allow my body to express itself physically however it wants. So it's like I'm taking this morning time to process whatever unprocessed feelings or trapped energy is in my body. So maybe I'll, uh, or I'll, uh, I'll spread out. I'll do that for a few minutes. And then I will sit uh, like this with my feet on the ground and I will imagine all the energy flowing out of my body and into the earth. And I will pull up energy from the earth and into my body. And uh, that's my... That's my morning routine. That sounds like Reiki. Is that Reiki? Are you doing Reiki? No. Oh. I wouldn't I wouldn't call that Reiki, but I'm I'm definitely moving energy, so there's something in common with Reiki. Very uh, cool. And I would say this about morning routines, which is this is my morning routine. You're welcome to try mine if you like, <laughs> but what you're looking for in a morning routine or in any routine to come back to yourself is something that genuinely works for you. So you want to be figuring out, oh, this feels right for me and building on that. What I don't suggest and what people usually do is try to figure out the right thing and then force themselves to do it. If you are trying to figure out the right thing and then forcing yourself to do it, you are not, according to me, doing the right thing and it will be unsustainable. So that's my spiel about routines. What do you think of that spiel, Lauren? I, I, I actually agree with that a lot because sometimes you feel, for instance, when I used to work out, I would make sure I woke up and work out, but then a certain part of me was just didn't want to work out anymore. So <laughs> doing that as soon as I woke up was actually like just bringing me down yeah. a little bit. So I had to change up my morning routine and I started doing workouts later in the day or when I watched TV or whenever yeah. I felt like it which I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's a good thing, but maybe I need to get on a better routine with my working out. Well, there's nothing wrong with discipline. So if you're, if you're feeling like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to put in some time, I'm ready to focus, that can be really good and positive and healthy. But if you're coming from a place of something's really wrong with me, I really, for instance, can't deal with something bad about myself, and you're going to use a lot of effort and will to try to fix something bad about yourself, it won't work. It's going to end up making you generally feel worse about yourself. Yeah, that's that's how I was feeling with it. But uh, just to, to tell all our viewers out there, we are actually streaming on Amazon Live right now. So you guys can all come to Amazon Live. And we are going to be giving away one of David Savage's books, Healing Heals the Healer 2. So everyone come and then you can have an opportunity to call in and ask hmm. David a question about healing or traumas. What are, when, because I know you coach all different types of people. This is what you do hmm. for a living. The word coach is a little bit, okay. I wouldn't say I coach, but. All right, so you, what but do you do? I, that's you just my them? sensitivity. I wouldn't say that either. I, I, I mean, I'm mostly right these days, I'm, I'm teaching. So I, uh -huh. you could say I teach. Teach, okay. Yeah. So in your classes, what are some of the, the most questions that you get or the biggest questions? Well, Maybe another way of thinking about that is what do I tend to teach? Yes. Um, and I teach a lot around uh, how to have a healthy relationship with your emotions. That's probably the foundational thing that I teach. What are emotions? How can we relate to them in ways that are healthy, healing? And, uh, and then how do we relate to the emotions of others in a way that is healthy? Uh. So those are, those are the, that's probably the foundational 
emotions. work that I, yeah, emotions. Emotions. Ooh. Yeah. What, I, why did you go, ooh, tell me well, about that. Well, as, as an actress, I mm -hmm. have to always be very in touch with my emotions, even though sometimes I may not always want to be. And because I'm so on guard about other people's emotions and just being in the moment, I'll just be around people. And because this is my job, I just see their emotions. Like I see how they're feeling. I see if they're bored. I see, I see their, their micro movements. Mm -hmm. Do you, it, because you're an empath, is this something that you also see? Um, well, I'm curious more about your, you, you went, <laughs> uh, when I said, uh, emotions, emotions. And, and what was that? Uh, was that, uh, that, um, you don't like the fact that you're aware of everyone's emotions around you? Is yes, that... it's so frustrating. I get so, I get, so, I'm, I get very um, sensitive because mm -hmm. I can see it. And then I just, I, I don't know if I create stories, but I make it worse than what it is. So you see, <laughs> so the, uh, is that you see people's emotions and then you're afraid that maybe you're making more of what you're seeing than is really there? Exactly, hmm. exactly, exactly. Or. I just, as an actress, it's, I'm, I'm just read, I'm going in the flow and it just always kind of, it can like, you can kind of meet somebody and you don't, you feel like a weird vibe with them and then you see them feeling the weird vibe and then that's it. Like I was at an event the other day and I was talking to this girl and I just felt a weird vibe and then it just got worse. So I don't know like how to handle those situations where like I'm super. So uh, it was really just really awkward moments awkward moments is that is that what your yeah your reaction is so I'm just like oh my god realness emotions we have to talk about this right now on camera together thank you Stephen boots for following us shout out to Stephen boots sorry so you don't like talking about realness or emotions or that I there's love a talking there's about a dread realness it's okay if you don't totally love it but sometimes when I'm on camera and I mm -hmm. know this is live to mm -hmm. how many however many thousands of people forever now on the <laughs> internet mm -hmm. we're gonna be getting deep talking about emotions and I'm like great <laughs> that great is sarcastic, right? It's you totally mean, you sarcastic. Mean great. So, so, so I, so we're very different in this way because I really like, I guess I like <laughs> awkwardness and I really like working through deep, sensitive, tricky material live in front of audiences. I've seen you do this. And you, you, that's not your approach. My approach is just smile, happy, fun. And if I start mm. crying, which sometimes because of where I am at, like sometimes I'll be doing a live stream and I'll get emotional about something and I'll start crying, but it wasn't like a planned thing, you know, and but after I do it. Don't you feel like some of that is your best work? I mean, if you're crying on camera <laughs> about something meaningful to you, don't you feel like people connect with that? I don't know. I just sometimes, you don't know? well, this is my thing. If it's, if it's a, in a scene mm -hmm. and I'm playing a character, that's great. But if it's in real life, I sometimes feel like a crazy person. So you equate <laughs> having intense emotions with being crazy. Is that right? Sometimes, yeah. What does this mean, David? Well, it. Um, what does it mean? It probably means that you were not allowed as a child to have intense emotions. Uh-huh. And so... Andy? Well, we're calling in some help. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah, maybe I wasn't allowed to have intense emotions. I don't know. It's just, you know. I see you already we're going into a place that's uncomfortable. Uncomfortable, David. Yeah, you're uncomfortable. <laughs> so I'm happy to not go into uncomfortable places if you don't want to. But you did uh -huh. ask me what it meant, so it's hard to avoid answering your question. Uh-huh. Yeah. Then this went off. So, okay. All right. We're uh, having just the smallest, smallest technical adjustment here. Just learning. Here. Just learning. And just I'm learning, learning, I'm learning about, about, about Sway TV and this completely new way of conveying content through Amazon. Isn't it cool? Which is a, a direct way to uh, get people uh, to humanize products. So it, it feels good to me that, you know, this, this book is available with literally like a click. Uh huh. So I'm noticing that you're being drawn to something else. So I'm happy to follow where you're drawn, Lauren. I'm, I'm just, I'm just learning about you and excited mm -hmm. about, about your book, David. I'm really, really excited about all the, the people that you help. So you do these things that are called intuitive readings, right? Yes. Cause you're super, super intuitive. And I feel because you're so in touch with your emotions, is that why your intuition is so strong? I think, um, that's a great question. You asked, is my intu so, okay. So I noticed this difference between us. So when you ask a question, I can't help but kind of really go deep and process the question. 
and I can feel some tension in me because I, I'm not sure that that's what's wanted, right? Do you want me to really go deep and answer that question? Of or, course, David. Why else would I ask it? Um, I want you to go to keep so things, deep. Keep things moving. Keep, think, keep things alive and fun. Oh, so well, maybe for sure. I always, but that's a both. That's like I both mm. equal. Like I want both of those. Like I want to know all of the things that you know about like human emotions. So maybe, maybe what we can do is focus on things that we can move quick and fun through, but that also I uh, have some expertise on. Okay. What do you think? But you do have expertise on intuition, so I thought I was doing yes. the correct Yes, so we thing. can talk about, so we can, <laughs> 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 but the question, the question was, uh, the question was, was, was a deep one. Okay. Do you want to go, you don't want to go deep? Okay. I can, I, can I, 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 I will, I will go for it. So you said, does the fact that I'm in touch with my emotions, is that why I have such a good intuition? Yes. And the answer is unfortunately complicated. So um, one way intuition can work is through the emotions. So if you are really in touch with your emotions, you're going to be in touch with the intuitive part of yourself that works through the emotions. For instance, if you're in touch with the subtle way fear might feel, like, ooh, I feel just a little afraid. If you can feel that, then your intuition is strengthened by your sensitivity to your own emotions. But intuition doesn't just work through the emotions, it can work in lots of other ways. And so you can have a great intuition and be completely disconnected from your emotions, or you can be very connected with your emotions and only have your emotional intuition activated. But that doesn't mean that you'll be able to just know things out of the blue or see things, because intuition can take so many different forms. Now, one of my favorite books ever, mm -hmm. uh, besides your book, David, mm -hmm. is it's called The Intuitive Way by Penny Pierce. And she just talks about how to develop your intuitions. What are some ways that you've mm. gone and, and, and developed your intuition? Like she has exercises and meditations. Yeah. So a great way you can develop your intuition is pay attention to the things that you are intuiting that turn out to be true. So just like noticing that, oh, I had an intuition about this. I had an intuition to say yes to this event. I said yes, and it turned out well. Wow, look, my intuition worked. The more you pay attention to your intuition, the better your intuition will get, and the more you'll be able to trust it. That's one good don't, tip. What if you don't listen to your intuition? Does it, and most, is it... most of us don't listen to our intuition. Most uh -huh. of us ignore our intuition. Uh -huh. So if you ignore your intuition, you're, you're very much uh, not alone. Uh -huh. And it's a miracle, actually, if you are able eventually to listen to that little voice and, and follow it. Uh -huh. it, you, it will usually have wisdom. And it can be tricky to differentiate between the little intuitive voice that has wisdom and a passing feeling of fear or something that you just don't want to deal with. And that's a practice to learn how to see what is truly your intuition and what is noise. So how do you tell the difference? Practice. Practice. Practice and paying attention. And paying like, attention. Like, you know, the, the feeling, if we take um, like a clenched feeling in your gut, right? Yeah. Like, oh, like, oh, this doesn't feel right. Well, it could be that something is really wrong and you need to leave. Or it could also be that you ate something bad and that's why your stomach is hurting. And if you're not really paying attention, you're not in the habit of paying attention to your body, you're not in the habit of paying attention to your feelings, those two things might feel very similar. But if you are in the habit of paying attention to your body, paying attention to your feelings, you'll be able over time to separate things out. So I guess what I'm saying is pay attention to your feelings, pay attention to your body a little bit more than you do right now. Just a little bit more than you do right uh -huh. now. Okay. Um, so can you talk about your classes a little bit, David? Um, a good way to catch me these days is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday on Clubhouse. If you're watching Amazon TV, there's a good chance that you are uh, an early adopter of tech sorts of things, yeah. in which case you may have heard of Clubhouse. It's an app that's on the iPhone now, but will soon be on Android. And there are live events on it. And Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, you can find me doing events on Clubhouse. You can just follow me by looking for my name on Clubhouse. Uh, another thing you can do is sign up for my mailing list at www.empath.nyc and then I will send you my newsletter and on my newsletter you can find out about my classes. Uh, I teach online fairly regularly. Uh -huh. And um, 
retreats, retreats I do um, as this, as it starts being safe again, I'm going to start holding semi-regular retreats in upstate New York. If you want to learn more about those, probably just sign up for my mailing list. Cool. Very, very. I live in New York normally, but I'm, yeah. I'm You're here. You're in LA. How I'm... are you liking LA? Well, I grew up in LA, so it's, it's home uh, in a certain way. And it just like, it slows me down and it makes me feel a little bit dreamy. <laughs> and, uh, and it feels like, like I'm swimming through molasses. That's how I feel in LA. Swimming through molasses? Just like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, everything is so nice and pleasant. And oh. I, 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 I like the, um, I like the, the groundedness and uh -huh. edginess of New York over the uh -huh. soft molasses feeling of LA. You got, a, you got a comment about your book, David, which is a really sweet comment from Johnny Kong. Really awesome. Oh, thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Johnny, so much. Wonderful, and simple, yet powerful book. Do you, what, do you think it would be okay to read a little bit? Yeah. How do you, are you sure? I'm you sure. You can say no. As long as it's a family-friendly page. I promise, <laughs> I promise family-friendly page. Um, it's going to take me 10 seconds to pick the right one. Would okay. you like to fill that airtime with charm? Yes, of course, guys. If you are just sitting here right now, just look in our carousel. You can find David's book. You can get it right now on Kindle, or you can order it and get a hard copy of it. Also, we have a ton of really cool products in the carousel that I love. One of them are these amazing bath bombs. I love bath bombs. That's one of the things that I do when I'm feeling stressed. I like to just put a really, really warm bath mm. and I put the bath bomb in and I just, I, I meditate, I listen to music and I just feel good again. I don't know, they say connecting with nature or the elements always really helps you if you're feeling stress or anxiety or sad Does sadness. it help you? Oh, it does help me. Mm -hmm. and, and honestly, guys, you don't need to live and have a huge backyard to connect with nature. You can all just jump in the shower. Like water is just one of the, the best things to connect to. But anyway, David, let's, let's hear your book and guys, okay. check them out. Charles wants to hear a reading. Okay. So, so as I said, um, my book is just these little essays, maybe a page or two, and they're pretty short. And I'm going to read one of my favorite ones. You okay, Lauren? Yes, I'm okay. okay. You sure? I'm totally sure. I'm excited to hear it, what, what your favorite one is. Okay. It's called, this little essay is called, Why Do I Want to Be Better Than I Am? Why Do I Want to Be Better Than I Am? I woke up. I told myself I should go to the gym. I told myself I should journal. Instead, I checked Facebook, watched Sweden beat Mexico, and felt guilty about it. An old pattern to hold myself to some standard of productivity or even of self-care. To compare myself to another hypothetical David, one who wakes up, meditates, kills it at the gym, and super focuses on the tasks at hand. But why is this David better than the real one? Who decides these things? Who told me I was irresponsible and lazy? And why do I listen? It's okay to want to be more than you are, but whatever you're trying to be more of, it's worth asking where that standard came from. Maybe the more to aspire to, is just more self-accepting and more self-loving. I love that. Yeah, and I, I think I'll, I'll give it. I'll give a. I'll try to summarize what I meant by that in case reading it didn't make it clear, which is that most of us have these external standards of who we're supposed to be. How many of us go to sleep at night thinking we should have done more? We should have been more productive. We should have made more money. We should have worked harder. We should have been nicer to our kids or our parents. How many of us feel this constant oppressive feeling of what we should be? And how few of us ever take the time ever in our lives for even a minute to go, is this something I really should be aspiring to? Where did that standard come from? And what this little section is asking is, Maybe instead of asking ourselves how we, sh how we could be better, we can ask ourselves how we could be more kind to ourselves, more compassionate with ourselves. And maybe that's the only better that we need to aspire to. I love that. Do you? I, yes, I do. Yeah. And I, I, I love the part where, where, you were, where you said in your book that you, you need to just appreciate yourself more. And, and I know it's about self-love, what are some of the self-love practices that, that you do? 
Um, what are some of the self-love practices? I don't know if I have any self-love practices. I think maybe, maybe uh, actually that's not meditation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, self-love is hard and even the phrase can be intimidating. Um, so people, when you hear like, oh, I need to love myself. Most people go, oh, great. Where do I start? I really don't like myself very much, or I only like this part of myself and how do I love myself? And so I hear that and maybe trying to be self-loving isn't the way to actually be self-loving. And maybe if we set a lower bar, we can actually go further. And so what, what I aim for is self-acceptance. Can I accept parts of myself that I don't like? Uh, for instance, let's say I, I have a list of to-dos and then I don't do them. And I start saying, I suck. Why couldn't I do these things that I was supposed to do? Maybe in that moment, instead of saying, I suck, why couldn't I do those things I'm supposed to do? I can say to myself, hmm, there must be a really deep and good reason why I couldn't do those things. Maybe I can be curious about what that reason is. Maybe I can be a little more understanding of myself. That's a, we could call that a self-love practice. I like that. And you're having more patience with yourself. Yes. Instead of, instead of criticizing yourself, which is something that I do a lot or, yeah. Yeah. And even, even to, to be compassionate for, toward ourselves for being self-critical, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, oh, people go, I beat myself up a lot. And then they go, I shouldn't beat myself up a lot. And they beat themselves up for beating themselves up. And now you're in the cycle Circle. again. And maybe it's okay that you beat yourself up. Maybe you beat yourself up because that's the only way you learned how to talk to yourself when you were a kid. And so the pattern is really deep. And maybe the way out of beating yourself up is just to accept for a little period of time that you have no choice about it. And that's the way you are right now. And it would be nice if you could change, but maybe you can't yet. Oh, and yeah. you, can you feel the space that that creates? I can feel, there's like a, <laughs> it's hard for you to let go of that, um, that need to be better. Mm -hmm. I can see it, yeah. but then there's also a little part a of you. Can you feel something soften even as something hardened, even, even as you're like, no, I can't do that. Something still softens. And it's that softening that I just elicited in Lauren just a moment ago. That is the softening that I am hoping this book will offer to readers. And is this is what you do in your classes and your retreats and your one-on-one -on -one sessions. It's a lot of what I do. Uh, I would say half of what I do is helping people accept themselves. That's a good half of what I do. Um, another way of saying that is helping people integrate themselves. So what, what you were just showing a minute ago is you have two parts. You have a part of you that is really perfectionist and striving. And then you have this other part that is softer and is like, oh yeah, I can, I can be gentle here. And we saw just a moment ago, those two parts operating. And those two parts both belong to you and they're both equally beautiful and valid parts. So in integration work, we try to make friends with all of these different aspects of ourselves and accept them. So that's half of what I do. And then the other half of what I do is helping people understand other people better. How can you understand what another person is saying, what another person is feeling? How can you interact with them in healthy ways? Empathy, you could say, uh, both in individuals and groups. Now, your name on social media mm. is Empath. Yeah. Empath NYC. Uh, I, I don't know if a lot of people out there know what empaths are, but maybe mm. we can just, I, I, can, we, can we describe it in a way that you're also teaching the people who know about it something new and different? <laughs> Hmm, that's a good challenge. Yeah. Well, okay, if you already have thought a lot about what it is to be an empath and you identify as an empath, it might help you to know that however you are thinking about being an empath, somebody else is thinking about it in a completely different way. So that's one of those words that a lot of people pretend to know what it means, but then it's very hard to pin down and it creates even some embarrassment. Oh, like I know what that, uh, do I know what that is? So um, an empath in the way it's used, that term is used, can mean somebody who's just really sensitive. Like, oh, they get hurt or sad easily. That's an empath. 
kind of like 20 years ago, we call people emo. <laughs> uh, or on the other side of the spectrum, away from the emotional realm, it can mean psychic. Oh, they're an empath. They have psychic abilities or they're clairvoyant. So it could mean those two things, the way I use it and the way I like other people to use it, but who am I to decide how people use words? But the way I use the word is someone who feels the emotions of others. So I can feel what you're feeling now a little bit in my body. Your feelings are coming into my body. That is me being an empath. That is my empathic gift. Do so, I dare ask you how I feel right now? You don't, no. No? Why? You don't want to know? <laughs> do, you want, do you want to know? Do you uh, want... I, yeah, of course I want to know. Well, how do I feel right now? Can we, can we start by acknowledging that there's a little bit of you that doesn't want to know? I totally, totally, and I'm kind of scared what you're going to say, but, you know. Well, one of the things that we learn that I teach is that... Um, it, you want to learn to respect people's boundaries. Oh. And you want to respect people's boundaries if you can, even if they say it's okay. So somebody might say it's okay, but that doesn't mean that they truly want to be uh, explored. So. Oh, so are you feeling that I don't truly want to be explored? I'm feeling that you're ambivalent. I'm ambivalent. Yeah, you're ambivalent. Okay. You could truly explore me on live Amazon right now. That's exciting. And guys, if you're watching from another platform, please go to Amazon.com slash live. Go to Sway TV and call in. Maybe David will read your emotions. Yeah, I think well. that I can do. Yeah. That 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 so Ooh. how did I do with describing empath? You gave me a good challenge. Could I okay. describe empath in I a way? I love how that... you changed the subject, David. It was just so it was so smooth. So, oh, so if we're getting, we're getting, we're oh, getting are we getting calls? a call? No, 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 just say that's the number. Oh, 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 the number. The number's there, on the, the number is on the screen, guys. Call us. Call in. So if you're on another platform watching this, come to Amazon.com slash live. Check us out. I think you did an amazing job describing, describing empath. I also love, because I've, I've watched so many of your videos, David. I love how you described that the word empath became a word. Do you want to go yeah. into that? Yeah, oh, that? absolutely. So the word empath... It sounds like something maybe scientific or maybe like a psychologist came up with it. It sounds like something that is official or something like that. But the word empath actually originated in a science fiction short story from the 50s. So some Scottish, now obscure Scottish sci-fi novelist wrote a short story called Empath in the 50s. And what he meant by the word was someone who could send and receive emotions the way a telepath can send and receive thoughts. Hmm. So that is the original definition of empath. Then in the 60s and 70s, it evolves um, largely through Star Trek. It was on Star Trek. And in Star Trek, it meant somebody who took on other people's pain. Ooh. And then it became popularized as somebody who is exceptionally sensitive to other people's pain and could even remove their pain. And then in the 90s, it became a pop more popular term and it started to branch off into any meaning you could want it to have. But at the, at the beginning, even through its first 20 years, it was a sci-fi term. This is not some precious term like, um, I don't know, what's a, uh, like you, you wouldn't want to go around misusing a term like uh, bipolar or um, you know borderline or something like that. These are real meaningful terms in psychological textbooks that one could be diagnosed with. Empath is not such a term. Empath is a fun sci-fi word that has gotten to take on more serious meaning randomly. Awesome. Yeah, and I like that. Uh, I see that uh, Charles enjoyed learning that. <laughs> Yes. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Now, David, what kind of empath are you? Hmm. Um, I primarily feel people's feelings. So, um, and I, I'm, I'm, I can feel what humans are feeling, and I'm also quite uh, sensitive to the feelings of animals, although I'm less inclined to feel what animals feel. I think uh, that's, yeah. So, you, do you know when the dog is feeling something? Or? I do. Yeah. I would, I, I, the word no is tricky, I sense. Uh -huh. and, and often we're feeling physical, subtle physical or emotional feelings. And those subtle physical or emotional feelings might not have an easy 
correlate in language. Gotcha. Oh, I'm feeling like a flow here. Like, is that uh -huh. anger? Is that sadness? Is that giddiness? I don't know. Putting language on subtle feelings is, is tricky stuff. Can you send people energy? Um, not as, uh, not in a way that I feel comfortable saying I can. Does that make sense? Why? You don't want to talk about that on Amazon Live? I can talk about it on Amazon Live. It's just not a place where I'm um, really in my superpower. I do have some capacity to to send people energy or to channel energy, uh, but I am not. I wouldn't recommend anyone call on me for that. Uh, it's just not my gift. But I'm happy to talk about my, uh -huh. you know, abilities. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like you have some abilities, I'm sure that you don't talk about all that widely because you're not necessarily that enthusiastic about them. No, it's not enthusiastic. I feel like there's just parts of ourselves that we like to talk about, not talk about. What would that be called in, in the world of healing? Like, do you have like certain things that you, you know, don't really like to share as much to, to everybody and oh, you're very open, but I'm, I'm, yeah, there are certain, certain areas probably that I don't like talking about as much. Mm -hmm. Um, oftentimes it involves other people and I want to respect their boundaries mm -hmm. in terms of my own, uh, my own psychology, I'm pretty comfortable going anywhere, oh. honestly, like yeah. you'd, you'd have a hard time finding something about myself that I was uncomfortable talking about. Okay. All right. Well, I'm just going to have to think yeah, about something can, really uncomfortable as long as to it talk about on live stream. Yeah. If it doesn't involve other people, I'm pretty open. That's awesome. That's really cool, David. Well, David, can you, can you take a, like, what do you think I'm feeling right now? I'm going to feel something. Feeling well, you're, it. You're calling in a feeling. I'm calling in a feeling. Can you That's tell a little bit trickier, which but... feeling I am calling in? Well, let's see what feeling you're calling in. I'm going to feel it. Okay. And so it feels like this. I don't know if I have a word for it, but it's got a sort of soft, gentle, playful, curious quality. Something nice and sweet. Yeah, that was, that was pretty good, David. Thanks. Wow. That's... You seem surprised that I was actually able to do that. Yeah, I'm pretty surprised you were actually able to do that. So hey, now... Lauren, <laughs> I, I noticed you've watched my videos, you've read my book, you've seen me perform, and even now, as I tune into your feelings and describe what you were feeling accurately, you are surprised. Do oh, that's you... all for the camera, David. You're not of really surprised. I, I'm not really surprised. I, of course I knew you were going to feel my feelings, but I'm surprised for the viewers. It's like when you're playing a magician's assistant. I think you were surprised, Lauren. No, I was not surprised. I don't believe you. I Well, maybe you need to go <laughs> feel my feelings and go deeper in there. Now, I don't know if we're getting phone calls right now. But Let's I call don't, him in. yeah, I don't know how to accept the phone calls, but you, okay, we will, right. we will be taking some phone calls. Uh, we have a comment from Jeremy. I would think giving a reading over the phone could be pretty difficult. Um, call no. Ryan. What, how do we just put our ears on? I would call say, if she, if, if. there's a phone number on the screen calling. Yeah. And I'd also be happy to take any questions about being an empath or, how to handle emotions, yours or other people. I see a phone number ringing on the screen, Andy. It says incoming call. Where do I, hello? How do I, how do I do it? Okay. Yay, we got a call. I feel so special. All right. And scared at the same time. I'm, call back. We're going to take your call now. And I'm very excited to get on the phone with you. I'm scared. Do you feel that? You feel my terror? Ter ter hello. Hello. Oh, hi, Lauren. Hi, great to talk to you. Hi, good to talk to you too. Hi, uh, my name is Pavinda Singh. I'm uh, Indian originally from India, uh, but I'm calling you from the United Kingdom. Um, so I've been your subscriber for quite a long time, so I'm glad to see your guest today, which is David. Thank you. Amazing. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, welcome, David. Uh, David, just a quick question that um, regarding your book that who can benefit the most from your book? For example, is it like a student or is it like a general member of public which can, who can read in a, while traveling, while he's going through his university life oh. as a student or like mid-age, etc.? Yeah. That's a great question. Thank you for that question. I really appreciate that. 
I think okay, that... I'll, I'll hang up the call now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you. And it's so I'm so blessed that you're a, a subscriber. So nice to meet you and have a great time in the UK. I know it's late there right now. So thank you for. Yes. Th thank you, Lauren. Thank Love you. Thank I'm you. so grateful for you. So thank great you. question we just got is who is my book for? And I would say it's for anybody of any age who is feeling like they're going on or want to go on some kind of healing journey themselves. So if you are thinking to yourself, I, something's not right in my life and I want to look at it, or maybe you're a bit further along and you've started to look at some of the deep patterns in your life and you want to understand them better. I'm pretty good at making you feel comfortable going on that journey yourself by sharing about my journey. And I also think it's maybe worth sharing that some of the topics I talk about are, I talk a lot about Burning Man, if that's interesting to you. I talk about plant medicine, uh, ayahuasca, for instance. I talk about um, compassion. I talk about empathy. I talk about performance art. And I talk about the relationship between art and healing. But it's it's an easy read. It's not heavy. It's just It's just... I touch on this, I touch on that. This book is for you if listening to me, you resonate with my voice. Like, oh, this guy has something for me. If you feel that watching me, you will enjoy the book. Beautiful. Love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So, does anyone else want to call in right now and get potentially an intuitive reading from David? I would like to to get you guys on the phone. And I, I appreciate my viewers calling calling in. It's so cool to connect a, a voice to to who we, you know, to, 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 to these people leaving comments. It's really cool and to hear your stories. I love hearing everyone else's stories because I just feel so connected to you guys because the internet has been such a big, big part of my life. So that's exciting. And I guess while we're waiting for a call, I'm gonna ask you a little bit about like just sadness because I know you have a lot of talks about that and just going up and down through my internet lifespan it's hard because sometimes we work so hard on things and then we don't achieve them how do you get over those humps why do you need to get over them well just to keep going sometimes to find that motivation to just you know re kind of invigorate yourself well I think in your question there's um an assumption that there's something wrong with being sad. Mm -hmm. And so when you assume that there's something wrong with being sad, you're going to fight the sadness away. You're going to try to will yourself to feel better. And that might work for a little bit. Um, but it won't work forever. Because whatever you're really deeply sad about is still there if you're using willpower to break out of it. So ultimately, you don't get over sadness you go through it and you work with it and then you integrate whatever is causing you to feel sad so if you're you really want something and you don't get it then you need to go through a process of grieving i'm so sad that i didn't get it and ideally you want that to be okay instead of saying i should just get over myself what the hell's wrong with me why am i so sad that is not a healthy way of looking at it that might work for you if you, uh, if you want to move forward as quickly as possible. But I will tell you the part of yourself that wants to move forward as quickly as possible is not a very mature or healed part. And if you follow that part where it wants to go, you're just going to end up feeling worse later. So you want to try your best to pay attention to the sadness and be with the sadness. And then eventually it'll work through. Being with the sadness. Yes. How long do you have to be with the sadness? Um, that's not up to you. The sadness has its own natural rhythm to it. Gotcha. And I'll also say that sometimes what might be making you sad is a lack of human connection. And mm -hmm. so instead of trying to f solve the problem, maybe all you need is to be with someone and feel connected to them. And then you'll find that just by being together with someone, you are feeling less sad. I find that most of the time, what you're talking about, ambition, most of the time ambition is a substitute for 
feeling disconnected or feeling connected. So what we really want in our hearts is to feel connected to other people, to feel like we're a part of community. When we don't feel that way, we often try to find something that will make us feel better. And success is some of the is usually the number one thing that we latch onto. Oh, I feel lonely and sad. My culture offers me success as a way to feel oh, better. Here, oh, I'll work call. really hard to get it. Better to actually just say, oh, I want to feel connected. Let me see if I can find people to connect to. I'll take it. All right. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Do you have any questions for David? Or what's your name? Yeah. It's a guy. It's the crazy guy. Great. You're crazy guy? Is that your name? No. <laughs> not really. Is this even Lauren? Is her name even Lauren? Hmm. I'm guessing. Is her name her name really is Lauren. Yes, that is truly no, Lauren's not. name. Andy. All right. Oh. Do you have a question for us or me <laughs> other than is Lauren's name truly Lauren? <laughs> Uh, okay. All right. We, all lo right. we, we lost we, him. We lost him. We lost he him. didn't yeah. seem like his intention was to ask a genuine question around healing or emotions, did it? I, you never, you never know, but you got to be careful because right now we are on a family friendly platform. My mom is watching. Is and she? How yeah, can you tell? Because my mom always watches. Oh, she hello. Always, she always watches. So I just have to make sure. Sometimes you never know. People try to, uh, the internet has these things. They're called trolls. Oh, all another right. call. Hello. 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 Hi. Is this this is Lauren? This is Lauren. Lauren, I just want to tell you that I I watch you occasionally, and I I just adore you. I think you're just very kind and sweet. And uh, I wanted to ask David a question that maybe you could help me with. Okay. Please. I also think Lauren uh, is very kind and sweet. I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, David, what I want to ask you is that uh, I'm an older man, and I have a problem dealing with the aging process. Hmm. So how, how would you help me with that? What is the aging process? What are you feeling about it? I, I, I'm feeling that uh, when I look at a younger woman, I, I, I feel intimidated well because i can't be attractive to that younger woman because i'm an older man so i just don't know how to overcome that that i can't accept the reality of it well like I, you're saying you're not allowed to feel attracted to a younger woman because you're an older man yes well well i i yeah that's what i feel yeah well it, uh i i I wouldn't try, I don't try to control that. So if, if you're feeling an emotion like desire, let's call it, you're feeling desire, there's nothing you can do about that. And so what I would do if you can is go, I'm feeling this desire and that's okay. Now, maybe your rel relationship or dynamics with younger women is changing because now you are older and that's what you're sad about. But you can't do anything, nor should you try to do anything with the feelings. The feelings are what the feelings are. Well, then the aging process comes into effect too. Okay, what you, what's, what's going wrong? What's, what's your issue that you're having with the aging process? Well, it's just that I feel that I can't attract a younger woman because I'm an older man. And I look at myself and say, well, that younger woman is not going to be attracted to you because they're going to look for someone more in their age, mm. which is which is more understandable. I hear that. So you're feeling sad or frustrated about the fact that younger women are no longer going to be as interested in you as they were when you were younger. Is that right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So how does that, if you'll, if you'll go with me, how does that make you feel? Can you tune into that feeling? I, I can't accept, I can't accept it. Uh, I, my friends tell me you have to accept it because you got to look, you know, I look myself in the mirror and I can see the aging process. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. But I can't accept it that I can't attract that younger woman like I used to do years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe so, you, so I'm so, having a hard time. Yeah. So it's coming. Okay. What, what I what I would suggest right now is just accept for now that you can't accept it, and it's really frustrating mm-hmm. and upsetting, and spend some time being frustrated and upset. I also okay. I also feel like self self-love which we talked about before can also be really helpful sometimes when we feel insecurities it's it it stops us from really looking at our ourselves so if you're really focusing on on taking care of of yourself and maybe maybe there's something inside of you that's feeling this uh self-esteem maybe that if you keep working on yourself then it, it won't matter if there's no young woman and maybe you can find somebody to connect to. Also, there's so many meetup groups and even uh, like dating websites that you can kind of go on and just see how things go. Maybe the, the, the idea of a younger woman is, is not really the idea of a, a younger woman. It could be a block to something else. I don't know. David is the expert. Well, I'm curious how everything we said, we sort of threw a lot at you there, so. <laughs> So my advice was to accept that you can't accept it right now and be frustrated about it. And when people tell you you have to accept it, you say, no, I don't have to accept it. Right now, I'm not accepting it. And see if you can be okay with that. And Lauren's advice is to find ways to work on yourself and connect with people, uh, whether or not they're young. How's all that like? Well, and that, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. But when I, when I, I deal with my friends, they, they say to me, They'll say to me, uh, uh, don't look at a girl in their 20s or 30s because it, it's not going to happen. But I, I say, why? It's not impossible. It's that, not that's impossible. My right. <laughs> you don't have yeah. to accept something you're not ready to accept. And just because people tell you to accept it doesn't mean you have to. Yeah, well... Thank you so much for your call. It was so great to to connect connect with you, and I really hope um, I really hope some of this helped. Did it, did it help at all? Oh, okay. Well, um, all right, uh, David. I think this is a great transition to talk about manifestation. Oh, we got another call. All right. Okay. Let's. I guess let's do it. Another call curious about your feelings about that last call, but maybe we yeah, can go back into we'll go, that. Yeah, we'll wait a little bit. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. How are you? Uh, I'm doing well, thank you. Um, actually, I just started watching your um, lives just recently. Okay. And uh, I saw that you're live right now, and uh, it's kind of a cool coincidence, because earlier today I was seeking someone to ask a question to, um, but basically I'm kind of curious, like when you're, when you're in a difficult situation and you can't make a rational choice at that moment, what could David suggest to like make a better choice without making a, you know, a rational decision? If hmm. I don't know if that question is clear or not, but it's, it's pretty clear, but it's pretty general. Are you willing to share right. a little bit more about your situation specifically? Yeah, so, um, I'm, like, not financially stable the best, but my dog, sometimes I have issues, like, uh, take care of my dog, and sometimes I'm not sure if I'm, like, financially fit. So, um, he's pretty sick right now. Aww. And, yeah, and I'm not sure if I should, like, find a better owner for him or... Oh. Uh, it's like, yeah, it, it's, but you know, it's, that's why I kind of gen- generalize that question though, because should I like wait and then try to put more effort into it or like, well, the first thing I'll tell you is that there's no objective right answer here. So you got to make a decision. I would suggest making a decision from your heart and not from your head. This involves uh, an animal I'm hearing that you really love. And Lauren can speak to this yes. too because Lauren Lauren has a dog that she very much loves. And, and, um, and you want to take into account what your dog needs and what you need and take some time with that decision 
and maybe talk to some people you really trust and share your feelings and see if you can be heard by them. And then if you do that in an honest way and you take your time with it, eventually the decision will come to you. Clarity will come by being honest about it with yourself and with others. Does that, and then I want to hear what Lauren has to say, but first I just want to hear how that, how that sounded for you. No, I, um, I, I, I took that pretty well because, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to make a choice, um, and follow, and, uh, and, you know, sometimes it's best just to follow your heart, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, that, that, that hit home for me. I appreciate it. Right. Lauren, as a, as a, as, as a, a dog, dog yeah. as a dog lover, just, there are some people that like dogs and there are some people that love dogs and animals. And I am a lover of all animals. I'm going to tell you a story that I had gone to my old apartment to pick up my mail. And I met this guy there who was like, I knew his brother. He like, my, my other friend took over the lease and we just started talking and we connected. And I'm touching his dog and he was like, yeah, I'm gonna put her to sleep next week. And I was just like, what? And he's like, she has a tumor in her stomach. There's nothing we can do. Like I've already spent $8,000 at the vet and you know, she's just old. And I'm like, how old is she? And he was like eight years old. And I said, really? I said, did you get another opinion? Did you? And he was just like, Lauren, it's so expensive. I'm not working right now and I just can't afford it. So what I did was I reached out to my friends in the animal community. I went on Facebook. I looked for different rescue organizations because a lot of times rescue organizations have money set aside for animals and they'll work with vets and doctors to, 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 make a pet stay alive because they truly, truly believe that giving an animal a better life is, is better than putting the animal to sleep. And that's something that I believe, I believe in, you know, right. just if we yeah. can do, if we can get, like, I got my dog open heart surgery, you know, radiation and chemotherapy. So if we can do these things for real people, I think we can do them for animals as well. And I think every life matters. So basically I was able to connect him to a rescue organization that I had known. They, they did the, sur they, they ended up, he, he, he had a surgery where it was a mass. He got, he was, I guess got, he ate like tin foil and got a mass stuck in his, his belly and they did the surgery and they covered it. And now it's two years later and the dog is still alive and not sick. So it's just one of those things where I don't know, right. my, my beliefs are like, you never know. And any, when people say things like they, they told me my dog was going to die in three months, it's two years later. So I just don't believe them. I'm like, no, <laughs> but yeah. I hope that helps. Yeah. And no, definitely. If, if you're really, if, if, if it's really like a choice between eating or the dog, uh, I would say just reach out to organizations that, that are animal focused and, and see if, see if you can volunteer, see if you can make friends with people, see if, see if you could talk to a local vet and see, see what needs to be done. Thank you. I appreciate uh, both of you uh, putting your input. I know it's kind of not exactly on topic what you're going with, but it is very sad, but um, yeah, I'll just, I'll go with my heart on this one. I think. What's your dog's name? Uh, Murph. Mur Nerf? Murph or Murphy. Murphy. Yeah. Oh, we're going to say prayers for Murphy. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Nice to meet you. That was so sweet. So that was very sweet. Yeah. You could feel this man's love for his oh, dog, didn't you? Oh, yes. And it's yes. like that hits my like yeah. part of me because I am such a dog lover. I'm obsessed with my dog. So just like anything to do with animals, I'm like, save the animals. But anyway, guys, everybody watching, if you're just tuning in right now, we have David Savage, amazing empath, uh, just intuitive, just a person, just a brilliant person who wrote this amazing book, Healing Heals the Healer 2. We are live right now on Amazon. So if you want to call in, go to amazon.com slash live. You will see us. We're called Sway TV. And we're just answering questions, giving intuitive readings, numbers on the screen. You just give us a, give us a call. And right now, I guess in the break, two of those calls, uh, were, I'd love to kind of debrief yeah. with you and see process how you felt about them. Um, well, I'm, I'm so much more curious how you <laughs> dealt with the first call, the, the first man called and he said that he was having trouble accepting the, the aging process because his friends were telling him that he no longer could possibly 
connect romantically with younger women and he was frustrated at that thought and he was not prepared to accept it. Um, and I, I, my advice hearing that was you don't have to accept it. You, can, you, you don't have to just listen to your friends. You can believe what you believe and that is okay. Uh, but there was something in the subtext there that maybe we can talk about if you want. Yeah. Um, which is, uh, well, what do you, what, as, a, as a younger woman, what, do you, <laughs> what, do, what was your experience hearing this man's question? My experience hearing this man's question is that we're in Los Angeles right now. I mean, you see older men all the time with girls that could be their granddaughters. <laughs> it's, it's, a total, it's a total different thing. It totally is a, a mindset. And David made that mindset pretty clear in his own way, gentle way of, of, of explaining it. On the other hand, I feel I just have this, I have this approach of love being ageless or faceless where yeah we sometimes think that like certain things are in our way but like maybe he could you know be open to find something else maybe his fear is coming from the fact that he maybe wants to connect with someone who's older maybe it mm. hasn't worked out with a younger woman because he needed somebody more on his level so so intuitively maybe i was hearing him say i'm getting older but I'm not being able to connect with a younger person as well. So that's why I answered it like that. But I feel, I feel that in love, you have to be open-minded because you never know. And I mean, I could just, I could fall in love with anybody. And it just, you, you always fall in love with the, the person that you least expect it. So that's why I was just trying to tell him to be more open-minded. Hmm. Yeah, it's like what, there, there were two two ways of feeling into his question. And there's something that is a little bit uncomfortable about the idea of an older man saying, I want to be able to be with younger women. There's something a little bit, did you feel that? I did feel that, yeah. I did feel that, yeah. And, and, um, and I think that there's, there was a, um, there's something that feels subtly potentially exploitative that's the thing that makes me uncomfortable that it's it's that it's this oh i have this desire for these younger women but am i truly able and willing to connect with them as humans is that that part didn't feel necessarily that, that was part of it although it might it might have been uh yeah well, how do you feel when much older men uh express similar desires <laughs> um, you don't have to answer that yeah it's it's just if if i have a connection to them i uh, if we have similar interests i generally go for people around my age or younger for some weird reason so i don't know it's just um generally and if they're single um there has been older men that i have been attracted to but at the same time i'm I don't know. I'm just looking. I'm looking for family, and that's just something that I've I've been looking for. So, so yeah, that's well, kind I, of I'm an just, uncomfortable just, question. Yeah, David. So, thank you so, for that. It's so thank uncomfortable. You for that. All this just, is uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, I'm like, how do I answer this in a way that's not going to be offensive to like people in the audience? And my mom is watching. And so. I think you did. You did great. <laughs> I mean, I'm 40, and um, it's a, I'm noticing. Uh, first of all, I've never been. Um, interested in like women in their early 20s even when i was in my early 20s i was interested in older women and now that i'm 40 i'm still interested in and tend to be interested in women who are young like not much younger than me but when there's an interaction with a woman who's 20 or something i feel this gap in age is so huge a woman half my age it's like i'm speaking across a generational divide and the gap in knowledge and understanding of how the world works just feels like it's much harder to connect deeply but perhaps in some cases easier to connect shallowly uh-huh and uh is that better is a shallow connection better than a deep connection no no <laughs> <laughs> it is uh it can be momentarily exciting and ultimately unfulfilling and the trap is that in the absence of getting a deep connection we go in more and more toward more and more shallow connections. It's kind of like we're hungry for really good and healthy food, but 
you know, because we're hungry, we eat Pop-Tarts. And then after the Pop-Tart, we're not satisfied, so we eat more Pop-Tarts. That's the, that's the risk. Um, uh -huh. But also, not that young women are, are, young women can obviously be as deep and connected as anything, but I didn't feel like that's what he was looking for. <laughs> I could be wrong. I mean, you never know. And, and maybe there's something, and that's something a lot of times when we have these, these traumas or these desires, there's something behind those desires mm -hmm. that we're just not really looking at. Yeah, So I agree with I, that. I think maybe just doing some soul searching and really looking at why is it that you want to date a younger woman or... I didn't sense, and I could be wrong, that that question was something he was ready to delve into. Uh-huh. I mean, I don't know if you're still watching this. I hope that you are. But let's move on to my next topic. Okay. Well, I, I just want to acknowledge you, Lauren. We're not okay. going to go back. Into the, I okay, just want to acknowledge trying. that you did a great job w navigating this awkward okay, topic. Okay, and, and you brought it back, so thank you yeah, for that, Yeah, no, I just, just to acknowledge it. <laughs> yeah. I just want to say, Thanks. you know, I like awkwardness. I know I you know. don't like awkwardness as much, and I was just appreciating that you played in my awkward space for a little bit. Yeah, you got to do yeah. yes and, guys. I did a lot of improv growing <laughs> up, and you just have to go with the flow. Yeah. You can't be in resistance to it. You have to surrender like okay he's going there i can't fight this on camera because we're live i mean even You're though stuck, that would be huh? funny I'm yeah totally you could stuck. totally fight it on camera i mean i'd be curious to see you fight oh yeah i, I bet <laughs> i bet the audience would be too they'd be like yeah. i've never seen you do yeah. that lauren who is this david yeah. guy he's really a healer he can really like bring out something different in you we haven't seen in the last 10 years of your social media live stream well, that would be career. cool i would love that if people have been watching lauren for 10 years i would love to see uh if they've noticed any difference yes guys please call in let us know any viewers watching right now the phone numbers on the screen guys if you're watching from other platforms do me a favor go to amazon.com slash live here with my friend david savage the awesome awesome empath who wrote the book healing heals the healer Two. check out our carousel you can find his book on the carousel and it's just a really cool really really cool book i think it's featured now right? it's a featured okay yeah. then it is already featured and i don't yeah. have to go on the page and show everyone it i'm just trying to show everyone but i want to talk about one of my favorite things if that's okay yeah of course manifesting 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 because we talked about the 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 guy who wants a younger woman and we talked about <laughs> the guy who wants to save his dog mm -hmm. and i really 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 believe that if we have a positive outlook on things mm -hmm. and we're not focusing on the negative then we can actually get those things but and i know you we've had conversations yes. about this before in the yes. past so so what are your top well i want to hear more because i think you've thought more about manifestation and you have stronger opinions about <laughs> it than i do so i'd love to hear what what do you do that works for you in terms of manifesting so my problem is and uh this has just been a thing that i go back to often is that when you want something really really bad it's hard to manifest it because you're not in alignment because you're thinking about the thing that you want so much and it's just you're taking distraction off of yourself so hmm. so like if i really really want like i know you what's something you really really want that you feel comfortable talking about like an acting audition like okay. my auditions okay so you really really want to get a part yes and now you're now you need to manifest that part yes okay and so what's you're saying there's a problem there because you really really want it i start really wanting it and then i have to audition and then i get into this period of like procrastination of like filming the audition tape and it becomes a bigger deal mm. than what it actually is i i put it to this level of like this and then i just i end up getting anxious and nervous and just just messing it up if i really want it mm -hmm. and so what's your what's your solution to this well i have to focus on myself and align myself but for some reason this anxiety thing is a really hard thing to work on i've been working on it for years it's very very hard hmm. what do you think david you're the expert I'm, I would say I'm the expert on manifestation, but I can, I know a few things about it. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing I would say about manifestation is that you don't get to pick the way things manifest. So I would say if you're like, I want this part in this movie, you might not be able to quote unquote manifest that because you are ordering from the universe something too specific. 
or something not too specific, too um, too narrow, mm -hmm. too narrow. So what you're really wanting is, I'm, I'm going to guess, what you're really wanting is a part in a movie that you're really feeling great about, that's really exciting for you. Mm -hmm. That's what you're really manifesting. But if you get stuck on this particular part, I want that part you're no longer manifesting. You're just desiring. Uh huh. Do you see what I'm saying? Gotcha. And it could be that if you got that part, that would turn out to not be what you actually wanted. So you, you, what you want to do is get clear on, it, on what it is that you want and then be really loose about the way the universe gives it to you. So if you really want a part that you are excited about, that you feel great about, then you say, this is what I want. And then if you can, you trust, if you're staying in that space of this is what I want, you trust that what shows up that feels aligned with that will lead you to it. In the process of that, a lot of the reasons why you are blocked from receiving that will show up. And there are two ways to manifest when those blocks show up. There is way number one, which is the popular path, which is push those blocks as far down as possible by filling your energy field with as much positivity as possible. And this is uh, a very common approach, and I think it's the one that you tend to advocate. And this can work. This can work. If you can get good enough at squashing your negative thoughts and feelings, and good enough at pumping yourself up with the positive vibration and feelings, you might very well be able to get what it is that you want at an extremely high cost. Because whatever it is you've been squashing and pushing down, there is a 100% chance that it will come back around. And that means that you will have to keep pushing it down and squashing it down as you continue to try to elevate and elevate. And you'll be creating a bigger and bigger split in yourself. So that is very ultimately unhealthy, though temporarily potentially successful and satisfying. It's like, what is worse? Um, I find that particular approach to be ultimately toxic and empty, but it is also extremely popular uh -huh. and occasionally efficient. But sometimes, so sometimes we have feelings, right? And they're negative and we're depressed. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it help to just be positive? No. No? Doesn't it can, it? It, I mean, it helps to be positive when you're feeling down the same way it helps to take pain medicine when you're in pain. Uh, it can numb the negative feelings mm -hmm. and you might need to numb yourself in order to function and that's okay. But if you take pain medicine when you're in pain, you don't get to find out what is really causing the pain and you might need more and more pain medicine before you actually get where you want to go and by that time the thing that is causing the pain gets worse and worse and worse. So the ultimate solution to manifestation, you get clear on what you want, you let go of how it comes to you, you stay in that energy and that feeling, you follow things that feel aligned and you pay real careful attention to the negative energies and feelings that show up and instead of pushing them away, you invite them right in and you look at them with open-hearted curiosity. And if you can be <laughs> with those negative feelings with open-hearted curiosity and work through them, then absolutely anything can come for you, to well, you. I really think that's what happened with my dog because I, the doctors were saying, your dog's gonna die in three months. And I you know, did all the research. I called all the people. I called people who lost their dogs from the surgery he was getting. I was just you know, writing things down, but then I was also using the laws of attraction. And in my head, in my soul, I knew he was gonna be okay. It was a crazy feeling and I can't even explain how I did it because it kind of just happened. And I just wish that when I'm trying to manifest certain other things like my acting career, my love life, like why can't I manifest those but the, the safety of my dog, like that was easy. Like, <laughs> Well, I think probably because those, uh, what you wanted there was for the highest good of your dog. Uh-huh. Yeah. And the, the love you feel and felt toward your dog is pure. Uh-huh. 
And so when you were able to align with the love you felt for your dog, there was nothing in the way. Uh huh. Whereas with your acting career, the reasons that you want to succeed as an actor might have other aspects to them other than say for instance the pure love of craft or so all of those unspoken complicated messy psychological aspects to us involved in drive and ambition they are playing a role in this that is much much more difficult to look at and be with Gotcha. That's so that's so interesting. And guys, I'm I'm actually really fortunate. I'm doing another feature next month. I'm Yay. super super excited about one of the leads and a heart. Are you able to say the night the title? Yet? I don't want to talk about it until okay. we're shooting. I have a weird. I don't know. I also have I like this this like when you talk about things and they're not shooting yet. I just get. What about you? Just shot a movie. Uh, I did. I just shot a movie. Can you say the title of that one? Devil Goes to Kansas City. That awesome. I just I just shot that. That was really cool. And another movie just came to theaters a few weeks ago mm -hmm. called Last Call. So that's that's in theaters and, that's and on with demand. Jeremy Piven, right? Yes, that right? and Taryn Manning. So guys, check that out. But it's congratulations. I, thank you, yeah. thank you. And I think another thing too is like for actors, we get these jobs, but then it's like, what's the next job? And I keep wanting more. What is that? What is that thing of that desire to keep getting more? What is, is it? Greedy? It, is it selfish? Um, I don't know either how either of those two words help us but uh -huh. let's let's see what just take a beat with it what is it that you want more of i want more movies i want more success what is I want it a tv show what about uh success is it that you're wanting what what will success what is it i just i guess my own tv show or just bigger bigger projects a lot bigger pro more bigger projects and what will the bigger projects give you what is it about the bigger projects i just like working i just love working i don't even care if it's a big project you know it's just i want to be on set like all the time mm. okay so what you're really wanting is you have you love being on set yeah i love being on set like being here today at sway tv is so much fun like i just love this okay, well that's that's really that's really good i think that you could be on set four or five days of the week uh -huh. if you just were really aligned with that intention mm -hmm. and that would come i think you want more than being on set what do you think i want i don't know because i think being on set would be relatively easy to achieve uh-huh there's certain other criteria that you're factoring in in your desire i want so, it to be a good part that i like okay that's, that's it too like i want to read the script and really enjoy it yeah. Okay, that so you to want be... to be on set and you want it to be a good part. So yes. now that's totally cool. Yeah. But that's a... It's another thing. It's another thing. So that's what's messing my manifestation up. I, there's too many things. Um, I don't know that your manifestation is messing up. Uh, I think... <laughs> <laughs> We're not yet clear on what it is that you want. You want to be on... You want to be... Yeah, I'm not clear on what you want. You want two... You're wanting two different things. You want to be on set a lot and you want to have good parts and those are not the same and those are conflated in your head mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. so if you're trying to be on set all the time then you won't be going toward things that feel like really meaningful and if you go toward things that feel really meaningful then you might not be on set all the time so it's like you're trying to serve these two masters mm -hmm. as if they were the same but they're actually very different and they have different energies so the energy of like i want to be on set every day is like oh what do you got what do you got i'll just try that oh cool you're inviting me oh three o'clock i'll show up that'll be fun you want to feel like that's the energy of being on set every day and sometimes you have that energy and you'll end up on set every day the energy of i want to do parts that are really meaningful is where can i find a really good script what have you heard of that is really deep and meaningful what writers are out there who are doing work i respect how can i connect with them that's a bunch of energy that isn't on set. It happens much slower. It's more deliberate. It's more mindful. It's a completely different way of being. Mm -hmm. So what you're trying to do is get both at the same time and you're bouncing between these two ways of being and wondering why you're not getting the one thing. Yes. How is that for an explanation? That was What's beautiful. Happening? I can't believe you just said that. You're amazing that you just pinpointed that. I mean, I'm just like, you are a genius, David. Thank you. So how do I, so then how do I get what I want? Then I only have to focus on the good script part, right? Well, I'm not sure what it is that you want. I you want, want the good script. 
and what happened but if we go into that what, what, what we see is these two parts are not in conversation with each other yeah we, so if we go into the the part of you that wants a good part a good good script and i tell you that if you're going to really be aligned with that intention like you are here lauren francesca on earth right now to play roles that you feel genuinely excited about that creatively excite you that is your purpose then what happens when you get a call for a, a show or something that you don't really like that's going to take up a month of your life? What do you do? Well, well, I'm going to I'm going to say sometimes we say no to things or we we read things and we're like, oh, this isn't good. But then when we show up, it's actually really good. So right now what you're doing is I'm making excuses for you're, it. You're covering up. You're <laughs> avoiding the you're avoiding the question because it's too uncomfortable to try to hold both of these parts. So you've got these two unintegrated aspects that are both fighting inside and you're trying to tell yourself that they're the same, but they're really quite different. Uh, so you then, feel that? Yeah, so how do I get the one I want? Well, we don't know which one you want. Right now you want both and there's a tension between them and so you're conflicted. Yes. And so there's no, there's no there's nothing to manifest right now because you are not being clear on what you want. So how do I fix this? Well, do you see that the, the well, you see that the underlying tension is is um is why we're not able to manifest. We're not yet at the stage of I'm clear on what I want. Because if you get really clear on what you want, then you also get clear on what is not serving what you want. And if you're really clear that you just want to be on set a lot, that is not the energy required to get parts you're really excited about. But it will get you on set a lot. And maybe if you could let go of the desire for great parts, you might find that you're on set all the time and having a blast. And maybe if you could let go of the part of you that wants to be on set all the time, you might find that you're okay not being on set all the time, but that you're working toward great parts. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I have to decide which one I really want. I don't, I don't know about... Yes, in order to manifest, you have to... Decide is not quite the right word, but you'd have to work through what is in the way of getting clear. You'd have to just be like, okay, what... You'd have to get clear on what you really want. Not decide, because <laughs> deciding means you're letting go of a part of yourself that might, you might not be ready for. Because uh -huh. you could decide tomorrow... I'm just going to go for parts that matter. But then some friend of yours is going to call you up and say you've got some like thing that is on set and will be fun and you have a script to read, but you're not going to read the script because he's going to call you and it's going to be fun and you're going to go over there and you're going to be like, oh, I should have read the script and you know what I mean? You're just reading my life right now, David. It's like you're knowing my emails. Like It's just like you opened my email box. <laughs> like, did, like, how did you just do that? Like, well, this is right now. Like, I you? have this, I'm in this predicament right now. There's a bunch of scripts I'm supposed to read and I'm not. Because you're not, you're not, and there's nothing wrong with not being clear on what we want. There's just nothing wrong with that. Oftentimes we are not clear. And if we are not clear on what we, are, we want, we will not be able to manifest. It is not possible to manifest if you are not clear on what you want. Okay. You're not at that stage of the process. All right. Well, Pama just said, I want the light thing. So hand me one of those lights. I'm going to... Uh, Swiftly change the subject here and talk about these amazing Govi lights. You can check them out in the carousel below. Check them out. They are awesome and they make any backdrop look really cool. For me, I do social media at home every single day. So it's really important to have good lighting and a good setup behind you. That is what makes people click on your videos because they feel more connected or they feel that you're doing things that are that are more um, professional. Let me see if I can find this Govi. Actually, is it on the, it's on the screen already? On the, All right, yeah. okay. But anyway, guys, check it out. It's awesome. Just to reset the room, tell you guys <laughs> what we're talking about. Have my friend David here. He is in town from New York, David Savage. If you want to find him anywhere, he is on all social platforms as Empath NYC. And he has this really cool book, Healing Heals the Healer 2. It's right behind me. You can see it in the carousel. Get it. And we're going to do a giveaway for somebody who calls. So if anybody wants to do a call, make sure you join us. If you're watching from another platform, go to amazon.com slash live you will find us here follow sway tv and yeah guys i have a show on here called shocker girl because 
my because you're the chakra girl because i'm the chakra girl andy looked at my i sent andy my amazon wish list and he said lauren all you have is crystals and essential <laughs> oils and i was like well yes my chakras are very important and he was just like okay you're gonna be the chakra girl and i was like okay that's a good name i like that name yeah Yes, yes, I love the that. The chakra girl and the empath. And the empath. Very cool. Very cool. Do you think chakras have to do with healing at all? What do you think about chakras and healing? Do I think chakras have to do with healing? Yeah. Do you exactly. think um, uh, emotions have to do with acting? Of course. Okay. Of course. Yeah, so that's how I think chakras have to do with healing. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, chakras are uh, one way of conceiving of the self mm -hmm. with these different energy centers. And for some people, it's really meaningful. And there really is a relationship between, for instance, the heart chakra and our ability to feel, or this chakra, the third eye, and our ability to see, not just see with our two eyes, but see. Oh, you got a phone call. Oh. And, and so, yes, chakras are, are, are a great way of understanding our own mess. All right. Hello. All right. We've got a phone Pierce. call. Very excited. Hello. Hi, is this Lauren? Yes. This is RJ Ron from uh, Punky Doodles Corner, Ontario, Canada. Hi. You just had to shut off your. You just had to shut off your show though. It was uh, interfering with uh, the phone call. Nice, nice. How are you I, doing? I try. I'm doing awesome. Tried twice before, but. Uh, the phone was ringing, but you got someone else on the line, I guess. Yeah, I'm just uh, just was headed on my way to go roller booting here in Canada, but uh, we, we can hold off on that for a little bit. Nice, nice, nice. Well, do you do you have any questions for David or for Lauren? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I find that I the um, uh, the uh, part where you were talking with Lauren about. Uh, the really cool being on the set all the time versus the uh, more serious uh, type parts and all that. Uh, I've been uh, on several Tony Robbins uh, fire walks over, I guess, since 1996, so over a number of years, probably longer than Lauren's been alive. But um, uh, last time I helped crew for Tony was in uh, March 2019 in uh, uh, California. But uh, uh, he, uh, he does uh, similar similar things um, with uh, energies and getting really clear on uh, what you want. Uh, and it's not easy. That's definitely for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, um, I'll have to, I think I'll have to order one of your books because uh, it sounds kind of interesting. Um, I would love that. Oh, yeah, no, it's uh, where are you based in L or you're in New York and Lauren, whereabouts are you in LA? Or in California? Uh, I'm in West Hollywood. Oh, okay. Yeah. The last, uh, last time we stayed, uh, we're a 13-minute walk to the uh, convention center. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. Which one? An Anaheim remember, or downtown? Uh, downtown, yeah. Right downtown. Uh, we uh, stayed at an, um, uh, darn, not an Airbnb, but the... Um, the uh, vacation rental by owner, v, yeah, VRBO, and uh, it was a great spot. But since the lockdown, we're back in lockdown here in Ontario, Canada, which sucks. But uh, anyways, I mean, I really miss that's Canada. What... Canada's one of my favorite places to go, and I just I've been so sad because I couldn't go. I usually go to Montreal like at least a few times a year, and I was just so sad I couldn't go visit. It's worth noting that we are we are yeah. both vaccinated, right? Yes. So that is that is part of what makes us feel comfortable now. I'm not, and I don't know if I ever will be. But anyway, that uh, definitely I'm not a big big supporter of. But uh, anyway, I was going to say, is this is the COVID and all of the stuff surrounding it causing uh, you, David, to be more uh, in demand or or more people um, uh, reaching out to you due to stress and anxiety? Yes. Yes, I would say uh, COVID, COVID is causing a lot of people to have a lot more anxiety. It's bringing up a lot of issues for people. It's also creating an opportunity for people to look at themselves in more honest ways, yeah. maybe for the first time in their whole lives. And I really like working with people just at the moment when they start asking themselves what's really going on inside. 
So yeah, I've been I've been mm -hmm. I've been more popular than before COVID. <laughs> it's it's kind of a chicken versus the egg thing, <laughs> which yeah. is better. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. No, unfortunately, here in uh, Canada, I saw a listing of uh, suicides versus COVID deaths, and uh, from January till June of last year, and the suicides were almost four to five to one versus COVID deaths. And uh, that definitely, and that was in British yeah. Columbia, which is not too too far from California. Um, but uh, no, that uh, yeah, it's unfortunately, just, it's sad, and you just have to to stay, try to stay positive, and and I think reading David's or, book, or David has an amazing class or, on you know, depression. You, know, you say you say try to stay positive, but what if somebody, Lauren? What if somebody can't stay positive? They they listen to your class on depression. And they find a doctor that can give them some medication. Uh. Well, <laughs> I don't. I, I don't. I don't necessarily agree with the medication part, but yeah, definitely okay. uh, <laughs> listen to people like David. Uh, yeah, I think. Um, and I and I'm not. not I'm not anti anti uh, whatever, but uh, everything in moderation. For sure. Um, yeah, so. I, I I find. I mean, trying to stay positive can work sometimes but more often than not finding a way to accept how you're feeling and connecting with others in an authentic way is healthier and better than staying positive Me meditation definitely will help and uh calm you i uh actually today is day 365 in a row that i have meditated good for you um good for you main mainly mainly for sleep at night, but uh, headspace.com is what I've been using for uh, about a year and a half, but actually today was number 365 in a row, which is kind of neat. Um, Congratulations. But, uh, no, no, thanks. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of a guy by the name of Brian Tracy. I have he's not. out in California. Yeah, he's out in California, but he is a uh, Canadian from Little Prince Edward Island decades ago, but he's in... Um, Huntington Beach, California nowadays. He's a, uh, uh, he's, I guess he's the first guy I ever um, uh, did uh, affirmations and different things like that. Uh, for, We're getting, uh, back. I'm feeling, uh, I want to, I want to thank you so much for, for calling in. Yes. And for yep. sharing. And yeah, it was so great to connect with you on here. Thank you so okay. much. And, and uh, I think, are we getting another call? No problem. What do you see? Well, I'm seeing. I'm yeah, seeing. no, no problem. I'll watch the rest of the show while I'm rollerbooting here in Canada. Take okay. care. Right. Amazing. Thank <laughs> you nice so much. Connect. Nice to meet you, and hopefully we get to Canada soon. Bye. I really, I really miss going to Canada. I like Canada I too. I like Canada. Yeah. I have so many so, Canadian friends. I want to go so visit. So I was, I was, um, in my, I'm, I'm excited to sell my book. Yeah. And Isn't we, that cool? we have a comment. Does your book help with anxiety? Uh huh. And I would say my book does help with anxiety uh, because my book really helps you become better friends with yourself and that can really help with anxiety lauren you you said earlier that you struggle with anxiety so much anxiety. have i been be honest be 100 oh, percent honest that's scary totally honest okay. have listening has listening to my classes reading my books what i've had to teach you as a teacher has it helped with anxiety? And I accept no as an answer, honestly. I think, oh. You don't want to be honest. I mean, there's parts of me that doesn't want to say what I'm thinking right now. Oh, well, that's good. But there's there's this part of me that like, you know when you, you know when you see the dragon, when you see the dragon, you're just like, it's like kind of more scary. So there's parts about my life that I didn't realize I was anxious about that by like listening to your mm. classes and that I've seen, I'm like, oh, this is what this is. So, so I guess it's a realization of that has, has been really interesting. I'm still, it's kind of how well, I asked you, like, have you healed yet? And it's just, you know, it's a daily process of, I guess, yeah. organizing and so throwing things out and <laughs> <laughs> organizing and throwing things out. I think, I think one thing that, um, what you're referring to, I'm understanding, if I'm understanding, is that oftentimes the root of anxiety is something very, very deep within us. Mm -hmm. And sometimes by being honest with ourselves and trying to look inward, we will discover in trying to heal or work with our anxiety 
that there is something there that when we look at actually can freak us out. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally can freak you out. And there are some things that I didn't realize that it was anxiety. I was just, oh, this is just something, this is just a panic attack. And I'm like, oh, this is anxiety. <laughs> just, or, a, just a panic attack, or, that's or just, interesting. Or the overall thing is just, oh, it's just OCD. And it's just like, oh, wow, I have yeah. a lot of this OCD. Mm -hmm. And just like realizing it, like, okay, just I guess I have to work on it. When you say I have to work on it, that's... That's scary for you. No, it's not scary for me. I'm just wondering... It, there's a lot of us who say things like, oh, I've got this, I've got that, I've got to work on it. And then maybe one out of 20 of those people call a therapist. Maybe yeah. one out of 20 of those people call a therapist. Um, most of them don't. And then most people won't do that work. Mm -hmm. or, or, especially when you have anxiety, you have anxiety about doing the work around anxiety. Well, you've given me the tools to do the work. Cause I, I, I have this book and I've, I've read it on, I have it on Kindle and I have a hard copy because I am such a fan of it and I've read it before bed. So I am gonna use your tools to, to do the work and, and listen to your classes, David, definitely. Well, maybe I should talk about anxiety about, about, about um, one, one little tool, Uh huh. one little tool. Uh, when you're feeling anxiety, and I, I don't think you do this actually, maybe I'm wrong, but I think you could benefit, is if you're really just feeling overwhelmed, it can be really nice to just soothe yourself. That's like, why I, I like find the bath. Myself, I like bath. Yeah, bath. Yeah, I find that can work. I find that I do this a lot when I'm having anxiety. Just, mm -hmm. That's one really simple tool. I like to garden. Mm -hmm. I like to garden. I like to, yeah. to touch my, my different crystals. This is a moonstone. Uh, necklace that I love to wear that really helps with connecting with yourself and uh, or my or my rose quartz that I love to hold on to uh, I feel it makes me feel more grounded but I also do like to do the exercise that you like connect yourself with the earth I was doing that a lot um, I was doing that a lot yeah. connecting yeah. with connecting with nature connecting with earth is really a beautiful way of soothing yourself and just like visualizing like the roots of like of yourself like going into the earth like I feel like like really helps, but I think I think definitely seeing that and 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 pinpointing those those points or those triggers and that's one thing I definitely got from your class to to realize that I have it and it's, and it's a it's a it's a thing where you said in your book it's it oh you want that book oh J Marcus Phoenix says I want that book well guys you can just check out our carousel and go get it right now go put it in your cart guys everyone oh, everyone oh yeah we should we give, should one, give away. one away yeah. should we give it to yeah. Should we give it to J. Marcus? I don't, yeah, if, yeah, we should give J. Marcus okay, the book. Okay, let's give J. Marcus J. the Marcus, book. J. Marcus, email us. And Hello at Sway TV. What is it? Hello at Sway TV. Hello at SwayTV.com. And, uh, and the book will be yours. And the book will be yours. Hello at SwayTV.com to J. Marcus. Yes, the book is and the yours. book is yours. So. And if you feel inspired, I would love to hear what you think about it. You can notice, actually, I've gotten, I've gotten some good reviews on Amazon. I've, yeah. I, 23 positive reviews. That's awesome. I yeah. gave you one of them. You did. Thank you, Lauren. I appreciate that. <laughs> I was very excited to read the book. I was just like, oh, my friend wrote a book. So cool. Was it easy to put a book on Amazon? Like, how did you do that? Um, it was medium easy. Uh -huh. You know, there was a bit of a process. I had to find somebody to design the cover, and I had to find somebody to help me format it, and there was some technical stuff hurdles. Okay. But relatively easy. Uh-huh. I want to make a book. I want to write a you book, guys. absolutely Let's can. manifest it. Well, are you super duper clear that you want a book <laughs> and you are totally willing to put aside anything that is not in the flow of that book? I don't know about all that, David, but I know for a very long time <laughs> I've wanted to write a book. Uh -huh. So, so yeah. So we can talk about that more another time. What do you think, guys? Would you buy my book? We have to buy David's first because his is done already. So check out, <laughs> check, check out the carousel. You might be waiting a while because I've had several... I've had several uh, book ideas that I started working mm -hmm. on. One of my favorites was a coffee table book, and it's still it's still like I, I like wrote it out, but I just never put it together graphically, and it just it's still there. Like one day, you have a calendar. I do have a calendar. Yeah, yeah I do have a calendar, guys. It's book like. So, yeah, if you want to join my Patreon, you can uh, get my calendar. Very cool. And and guys, if you have any comments, I think. I don't know how long we've been live for, but I'm I'm starting to run out of steam. Are you? How about, but you, David, I know you are, you're endless. You are, I, David, you are so energetic. What do you mean run out of steam? Uh, uh, 
I mean, you you are a, you are a streaming professional. You are a live. You are a live TV. streamer. I have probably spent more time live streaming with you now in our Amazon, in our Instagram, and this than I might have spent live streaming ever. So I am. You are a live streaming pro, and I am a live streaming amateur. Amateur. Oh my goodness. Well, I just know that like being in your presence, David, just makes me feel more at ease. And I just feel, I just feel like more connected. So I'm just being selfish right now. So you guys should all get to know David and follow him and path NYC. He is so, so cool. And make sure you're following here as here at, at Sway TV. It's just, it's, it's really great that we have this awesome platform where we can learn about stuff. I can bring on really cool guests for you and we can learn and we can shop at the same time. Yeah, and, oh. and my thing, Lauren, are we are we winding down? No. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're not. I, I'm I'm feeling like winding down, but maybe you can. Maybe we could take some more phone calls. Can, uh, yeah, let's take a few more phone calls. Does anyone else want to call if you're watching from another platform? Just go to uh, Amazon.com/live, call in. I'm very excited to talk to you all. And yeah, guys, I am here with the amazing David. He doesn't live in LA, so I'm not sure when he will be back. So make sure if you want to ask him a question about your life, about your relationships, about your traumas. Look How? at his face. Look at his face. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what is she doing to me right now? She's putting me on the spot, but he does know a lot. So How about a question about my book? A book. Okay. How about a question about the book? What the you... bo does the book bring up any questions for you? Healing Heals the Healer too. You can click on it. You can see a description of it. Do you have any questions about the book? Okay. I would love a question about that. Guys, call in. Do it. Do it. I like that uh, one of the customers says I have a very calming presence. You do. Do you work on that or is it just no. how you were born? <laughs> <laughs> I've worked. Um, I think. I don't think I used to have a calming presence. So I must have worked on something. I think that what might be calming is that I am... Uh, accepting of most of the different parts of people so oh. whatever you're going through I'm probably okay with it that is why I think I calm people but I could be wrong maybe there's something in the flat affect of my voice do you think it's because you did so much like inner work that you're able to like not be as anxious as I am or as other people may be or yes. negative or no, I'm still, I still can be quite negative but <laughs> uh, I do think that the inner work that I have done uh has released a lot of anxiety. Uh-huh. Gotcha. That's that's super interesting. I also think being able to understand people's emotions helps a lot. It does. And just the fact that you're so aware of everyone's emotions makes you like understand more. I think that's right. Yeah. Sometimes I can be aware of people's emotions, but then I'm not exactly sensitive to them. Like, is there yes. a way to work on that? Um, well, maybe you can describe what you mean by that, aware of people's emotions, but not sensitive to them. Well, just if some people can be critical of you or, you know, jealous of you or whatever. So if people are jealous of you, then you're, you're aware that they're jealous of you. You feel that. And it's hard to forgive them. Mm. It's hard for me to forgive them. If somebody's jealous of you? Yeah. You, what if they're jealous of you and they don't do anything about it? They just feel jealousy toward you. Do you still have trouble there? There's a little resentment there because I'm just thinking... Why, you know, why aren't they giving me love? Because I try to always give people love. Mm. So I just get, I'm hurt by that energy because I'll feel the energy and I'll be like, yeah. All right, but we got some questions. So Saved by the Bell. Uh, can you tell oh. us why you wrote it? Oh, this is great. So can I tell us why I wrote it? Um, yeah, I wrote it in stages on Facebook. So it's my Facebook posts over seven years, really lovingly edited. And I wrote it because it felt really healing for me to share deep emotional stuff with a, at the time, quite small audience. I really enjoyed that. And I think one of the things I meant to do in this world is show people that it can be okay to share deep, vulnerable things. It can be okay. Um, I'm not telling you to. I'm not saying go out and do it. I'm just showing you that I do it. And as I do it, maybe you'll feel more comfortable doing it yourself. Uh -huh. Do you feel like sharing these deep emotional things helps get that energy out? Yes. So for instance, I've struggled for years with money. And there's a lot of shame around people who struggle with money. If you're not quote unquote good with money or you don't know how to make money, 
that can be really anxiety provoking. And then if you're like me and you happen to hang out with people who have a lot of money on a regular basis, then that can be shame inducing and anxiety provoking. And then you don't want to talk about it. And so coming out of that closet and saying, these are my financial anxieties. This is my problem with money. This is how I relate to people who have a lot of money. Just owning all of those feelings, that was liberating to me to share. And it was gave people who are similarly conflicted around money uh, an opportunity to feel like they weren't alone. That's great. I like that. Yeah. That's really sweet. Now we have another question. I'm going to try to get the book. Does it get sent to the UK? Yes, absolutely. You can just as easily buy it in the UK as anywhere else. It's also available in Japan and India. It's all over. Amazing. And Jeremy asks, is there an ebook for it? Yes, there is. You can purchase the ebook, it's Kindle edition, or you can purchase the paperback as you like. Whichever one you feel like reading is great by me. Yes, guys. And make sure, make sure you go follow him empath nyc on all his social platforms yeah, just, he's awesome yeah instagram is empath nyc and oh. then clubhouse you can just find me if you're on clubhouse just my name search for my name and you'll find me david savage very cool very cool thanks right. for taking your time visiting yes. california to come Thank here you. at our amazing sway tv studios guys please do us a favor support this show by shopping our carousel yeah. check out all the really cool products we had the Gobi lights we had the bath bombs we had the the arrow garden it was so awesome and i love doing these things because it really helps boost my mood and my, heal my traumas because we all know that i have so many of them i'm an actor actors have lots of traumas that's why they do what they do but anyway guys thanks so much for watching i'm lauren francesca aka shocker girl follow sway tv love you bye bye Make sure you guys follow Sway TV. Follow Sway right here. Ooh, it's the Sway, sorry. <laughs> Corey says, thank you, Sway TV. Shakira says, thank you, Sway. Yes, guys, it is so much fun. We love Sway TV. Talk to all your friends and your family. Let them know about Sway TV. Enjoy the rest of your day. You can have a Tambe party. Thank you, you, Sway TV. Amazon Live, woo! time with all of you shop attainment all the time we in the house we having fun we doing the thing we swaying let's sway 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 let's go let's sway